So the moral of this story is you can't focus on perfection and bad work is necessary to get quality work. What's going on? You're listening to the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is about equipping you with confidence to pursue your creativity, and I truly believe you have a creative gift, and I want to help you find a demand for it in the world. And so far, I'm super early in these episodes, but I just want to express how grateful I am to everyone who took a moment to tune in as I launched this this last week, and You know, anybody who's reached out, gave me words of encouragement. Seriously, you have no idea how much this means to me. And you just solidify that this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now on my creative path in the pursuit of this creative career that I'm going for. So thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. And it's only going to get better from here. So today's episode, if you're like me, you learn and connect things so much better when someone speaks in stories or shares things through analogies. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about today. So whether you're a sports fan or not, this is kind of about hitting home runs. It's got a little bit of a baseball theme. I'm not saying I'm the biggest baseball fan, but this is what makes most sense to me. So I want to kind of share it with you and see if you can connect the dots as well. And today's topic is about hitting home runs. And I want to give you the secret to creating your best work. So starting off right away, I always want to encourage you to swing for the fences. And by doing this, you need to create a lot of work. So whether you accept it or not, every time you're at bat isn't going to be a home run. Every time you share your creativity with the world, it's not going to be your absolute best. And that's totally okay whether you want to hear it or not. There's too much pressure trying to outdo yourself each time when in reality, success happens from daily disciplined routines of showing up and working on your craft. So again, Always swing for the fences. Always try to keep hitting these home runs and invest everything you have into your work. Pour all your passion, your excitement, and expression to each breathing piece you create. Just know it is okay if it doesn't perform as you had hoped or expected. So leading off, understand that performance doesn't define you. I can't tell you how many times I drew up my best piece or wrote my best content to only hear crickets in the statistics world. And yes, when I say best piece and best content, I'm throwing up air quotes that you can't see. You know, when I release into the world and I hear crickets, it does bother me, okay? It sucks. I'm human just like you and I show up to the plate and I pour everything I have. I swing for the fences. Sadly, there were plenty of times I would even delete my artwork based on how it performed in the first 10 minutes. I am to the point now after two or three years posting work that I can easily tell on something like Instagram within the first 10 minutes if my art piece is going to be a dud or if it's going to be a hit. And as I talk about it right now, I haven't had a hit in a while. I don't recommend going this route as letting yourself and your work be defined by likes, shares, comments, and followers is a slippery slope that leads to disappointment. Believe me, I've been there. I've been so disappointed. It, it depressed me at times. It, it just wasn't a fun route until I realized it's more than that. Your performance doesn't define you. All right, so lean in, listen close, hit pause on everything else you're doing. Here's the secret to hitting home runs. So the secret to hitting home runs is getting up to the plate more often. Simple, right? Well, paralleling this to being a creative, it takes a lot of bad and mediocre work to stumble across your best. So in order to hit these home runs and put out your best work, you need to get up to the plate more often and put out more work. Now, I recently just listened to the audiobook Art and Fear, and I'm going to plug this into the show notes, perspective-collective backslash four. And in this book, there's a professor that divides his ceramics class in half. One half of the class would be graded on how many pots they could create at the end of the session. The other half would be graded on the quality of their pots. At the end of the session, the first half created a ton of pots, while the second half had only a few well-crafted pots. So who got the better grade? Well, if you're tying things together and connecting the dots, the side that made the most pots won because in the process of making as many as possible, they found ways to make better pots through higher volume and more practice. They weren't stuck on perfection, which allowed them to create more high-quality pots in the end. So the moral of this story is you can't focus on perfection and bad work is necessary to get quality work because hitting home runs requires more at bats. You can't be defined by everything you create as it's not always going to be your best. 
It's about finding ways to progress and experiment throughout the process. It's all about the process. This is the main reason I leave all of my old work on Instagram. So people can scroll back through the archives and see the progress. So you can go back two years from now and see the bad work I was putting out. You know, I was sharing it with the world. I was self-conscious about it, but I put it out there. So when people claim that I make it look easy, I direct them back to all that old work and I still explain that I have a ton more room for improvement. I want to encourage you to just stay in the game. If everything you shared was a hit, it would get outplayed quickly. The passion you once had would fizzle out and you'd have to search for what's next. This whole art game and creativity, it's all about the challenge. It's about showing up and working towards the vision each day, exactly like I talked about in the last episode. Life will throw you curveballs, but I encourage you to stay in the game and overcome the adversity because the true test of one's character is how they respond to adversity. And if you're listening to this podcast, I'm taking a good bet that you're a person of character. So exactly like baseball, you're going to strike out. You'll experience hitting funks in the pursuit of hitting those home runs. In creativity, you'll face criticism, rejection. You'll even get hatred. There's plenty of trolls out there. And the reason they're trolling is because they don't know how to do what you're doing. So it's easier to hate and bring people down than to build up something and create themselves. You're either a consumer or a producer, and it's way easier to be a consumer. We are the 1%. We're the producers, okay? Don't ever forget that. And this is all part of the process, so stay in the game. Stay in the game long enough and get as many at-bats as possible. Eventually, you're going to get a hold of one of those, and you're going to crush it out of the ballpark. When this happens, you know exactly where you're supposed to be on your creative path. You always get back what you put in. So yes, always swing for the fences. Never hold anything back in your work. You're not always going to hit a home run, but in order to hit one, you have to get up to swing. So you're on deck, my friend. Take a swing and put your work out there. Don't focus on perfection. Higher volume and practice leads to the quality work. This is how you hit home runs, and this is how you put out your best work. Again, I just want to thank you so much for lending me your ears and hearing the words that I have to say, because this isn't just for me, okay? This is to create something that's so much bigger than myself. I want to be a vessel. I want to help serve my fellow creatives and get them through the tough times and help them get to where they want to be in their creative careers. And if you're feeling these episodes right now, a great way to support it would be to go on iTunes, leave me a positive review. By doing this, you help other creatives like you who may need these words of encouragement and motivation to start sharing their work and start pursuing their own creative paths, okay? It is possible but it starts with taking action. So again, if any of this is helping you out right now, I would love it if you could just give me a review on iTunes or even just share the show with someone who needs it the most. It makes a huge difference and I'd be forever grateful. And if you want any of the information that I link up in the show, you can always find that in the show notes for this episode. It's gonna be perspective-collective backslash four. I wanna let you in on a little something that I'm working on right now. If you're a creative and you want to start building an online audience with the work you love to do, but yet you struggle with coming up with a strategy of how to produce weekly content and you're just unsure where to start, well, this is the perfect thing for you. If you visit weeklycontentchecklist.com, you can stay up to date on this new product that I'm creating. So over the past two years, I've compiled everything I've learned on how to build an online audience into a checklist that covers my blogging and writing process how to create a newsletter for it, how to create weekly visual content. Like for me, I do a drawing with a featured image. And then I also teach you how to market that through social media. I give you a plan. I give you a strategy. I take all the thinking out of it for you. So all you need to do is show up and create the work. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, you can stay up to date by visiting weeklycontentchecklist.com. And I'd like to give a huge thank you to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for the music that you hear on this show. Seriously, this guy is so talented, puts out great vibes. He's just a great person and a great friend. Highly recommend you check him out. You can go on SoundCloud. It's B-L-O-O-K-A-H, Bluka. Tons of free tunes on there for you to download and enjoy. And once again, I just want to thank you for listening. It, It means so much to me. Keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.